feeling like I am in an alternate universe. I am in a 40-year marriage. Found out about a year ago that husband was having a four-year affair with someone who was a subcontractor at work and young enough to be our daughter. She wasn't even alive when we got married. He also had a major PRN addiction and an affinity for watching Russian women masturbate. During that four-year affair, he stopped having S time with me the last two E action problems saying he didn't have a libido anymore. While having S time twice a week with AP. He never had intercourse with the AP and thinks he should get credit for that. Ha! Huh. I have a betrayal trauma therapist and he is one that specializes in S time and PRN addiction. He has made a complete change in his behavior and attitude and is remorseful, embarrassed and shame filled. That he accepts full responsibility for all of it, and then some. He realizes he was being a jerk even before the affair. He's doing the work of therapy and self reflection. I'm trying to heal and in the past few weeks had finally found some small measure of peace. Then Friday happened. I decided to check his computer and found passwords for his old PRN websites. It was clear he had not been on them in a year but the old messages and exchanges back and forth threw me for another emotional loop. It's hard to read your husband telling a Russian woman he didn't know it all. I love you and send me your resume and I'll help you get a student visa. JFC. He says it was just a fantasy world for him, that he didn't intend to ever bring over a Russian W or. Still. JFC. Then I looked more at his computer and found his diary. It's not really his diary. It's something he has done forever where he asks a question of the universe, and the universe replies. Or some asset like that, his higher self responds. The technique was in one of the popular spiritual books a while back. Anyway, the way he portrays me during a lot of the time is just awful. Memories I had that were good he is just cutting me down, blaming me for all sorts of things, and whining a lot about how he doesn't get enough attention and isn't heard. It makes me feel that even back then before the affair my life was just a lie. The words in his own hand cut me like a knife. I feel so unloved. I'm back to square one with rage and hurt and anger and grief and all those flooding feelings that overwhelm someone who has been betrayed. That's a real feeling like the world is no longer a safe place. I don't know what to do with these feelings being so fresh again. I was making so much progress. It started to feel like we could make a go of it, with a renewed relationship based on commitment, intimacy and genuine love and connection. I feel like I need to know everything and the everything hurts like a BTCH. But if I don't know everything, how will I be able to make this work? Anyone been here before? He hasn't done any backsliding, is working his program, seems honestly sincere and remorseful, and is making big changes. The last two days have been me going off the rails emotionally BC of reading old stuff that I knew about but didn't know the details of. Uck. This is so ducking hard. He didn't have a right to make me question my sanity. Redditor's reaction story 2 after. Redditor 1, while having S time twice a week with AP. He never had intercourse with AP and thinks he should get credit for that. This is contradictory. Did he have S time with her or not? Redditor 2, how much you need to know depends on what you want to do. If it's D, then you know enough unless you're in an at-fault location where infidelity makes a difference then listen to an attorney. If it's R, you have to know exactly what you're forgiving. All of it, no matter how painful, there's nothing at all wrong with being selfish about your own happiness and mental health. Right now, you need to be that way for yourself. Do not fall into the sunk cost fallacy just because you've been married 40 years doesn't mean he gets a pass. He's been unfaithful, so he has to do the heavy lifting if there's any hope of our open life phone, computer, everything. If he doesn't go for that, he's keeping secrets. He needs IC to fix what's broken in him before you can even think about it, MC. Do not let him blame shift or trickle truth you. Op answer, he's being open and not keeping secrets. I knew about the Russian women. He told me about them and about how much dollar a month he was spending on them. 
I have checked his phone and computers for new activity and there is none. This is stuff that happened before, but I never knew specifics. Never saw the text messages and such. It's also painful, Redditor 3, 35 year marriage here. My husband also had erectile issues caused by PRN. Look up PRN induced erectile dysfunction. He had an affair with someone 15 years younger than him who still had teenagers in the home. My husband wanted to reconcile but did not want to do the work and refused to go to individual counseling. I also found items on his computer that put me in a tailspin. We have been separated for 16 months now and I am divorcing him. He is a broken man who will not take initiative to fix himself. My life is so much better now. I am more positive about myself than ever. Yes, I might never find another partner but that is okay. You will have to ask yourself will I be better off with him or without him. This includes mentally, financially, emotionally, and physically. Check into a hotel for a week or two so you have the time to reflect on what you want. Or make your husband go somewhere your husband seems to be doing the work, what will happen if he backslides? Can you get over the betrayal? Do you want to stay married and live as roommates? So many questions to contemplate. I also have a hard time believing the no s time part on a four year affair, especially with a younger woman. If I were that woman, I wouldn't be giving blow jobs for four years with nothing in return. I hope you find peace whatever you decide. Op answer, I talked to her and she confirmed that they did not have intercourse. She did not do B.O. jobs nor did she like a uh, on herself. They basically played with each other. He got her off and played with himself while playing with her. Story 2, Time to Cut and Run? My D-Day was 6 months ago. Been with my husband for 12 years. We have an 18-month-old and just after he was born, he took a job where he's on the road for 6-8 weeks and home for one. It was a mutual decision we spoke about extensively before he took it and it was a great career move. Three months into the road gig, communication declined, he became very short with me, sometimes wouldn't call or text for days. I became suspicious but of course every time I approached the subject, he denied. Said he was just stressed out at work. He's been a heavy drinker the entirety of our time together and I've dealt with text messages and flirtatious behavior throughout that time. It got so bad at one point he was sleeping in his truck at the bar for the whole weekend so he could just continue on his benders. He ended up getting a DUI which forced him to sober up for the better part of two years. When the DUI happened, I was so over the BS that I decided to leave. He talked me into staying by saying he would stay sober. Then two years and it started to creep back in but never got to the point it was before again, until this job. Site 1, all of a sudden he's renting a room above a bar in a boarding house near the work site which makes it far too easy to drink excessively when you get off work. Every time I bring it up, he got defensive. Every time I get a call from him and he's clearly been drinking, he got defensive. Every time he goes a day or two without contacting me and I call him on it, he got defensive. Always an excuse. Site 2, I find him an apartment in a small town not far from site thinking that this is 100% better than living in the crap motel with all of the rest of the 20-something digins he works with. He'll stay out of trouble. Come to find out. That place is walking distance to the local watering hole and we're right back in the same situation we were at site 1. Nine months into the job, he comes home and immediately gets blackout drunk night 1 and passes out. I can't stand it anymore and go through his phone. Come to find out he's got a GF at both site 1 and site 2 and both are barmaids original, I know. In reading through the e threads, I come to find out that Site 1 chick actually came to visit him at Site 2 right before our son's first birthday and Site 2 chick drove him to the GD airport for his flight home. He calls Site 1 chick babe which is my nickname. I come to find out that all the times he was supposedly out with his made-up co-worker a man, he was with one of them. He told me he had developed a fondness for white Russians all of a sudden, which I come to find out is a drink site 2 chick makes him all the time. 
He bought camping equipment so he could get out and do something away from the bar on weekends. He was away from the bar but with one of them, too. I took my son to the ER one night with a 105 fever and he was admitted for observation. I called texted 10 times and never heard back because he was with sight one chick. Many more examples like this. I do not speak to him the next morning. He texts me throughout the day wondering what's wrong. I do not answer. I wait until I put our son to sleep that night and then tell him what I know. He yells at me and adamantly denies despite the fact that I'm showing him screenshots of the conversations I read and pics they've exchanged. This all transpired on day one of his R&R so he still got six days at home which we spend in awkwardness. Over the next week, he takes ownership of his sins and agrees to sobriety permanent, therapy individual and joint, to somehow get off the road and to officially break it off with both women. I arrange for a joint session while he's home and the MC essentially lays out a step-by-step plan for him to follow which echoes what we've already discussed. I agree to stay and work on it so long as these things happen which I don't think I would have done without a tiny human in the picture. I ask him why and he says it's because he realized his dependence on me and I wasn't there insert I roll here. There was a legitimate relationship with chick one based on the text messages but he swears it was only on her part. Keep in mind he berated me for telling her off in a text message because if I was only going to leave him anyway, why mess up what he had? Seriously? He said she kept coming on to him and wouldn't give up, so he finally gave in. Mind you, I've been beating myself up because I gained 10 pounds after having our son and this chick has two sizes on me. Chick 2 is 50 something and looks like a horse I FB stocked. In his words no BS, she had a hysterectomy and wanted to know if she could still feel things. Yeah. That came out of his mouth. It was a friend thing, just helping her out. JFC, two months down the road and he has done none of those things aside from supposedly staying sober hard to say seeing as how we live 1200 miles apart and there's zero accountability. I decide to hire a lawyer and file for divorce. He magically begins therapy. I agree to hold off. The rest has yet to happen. We're now six months out from D-Day and I am no better off than I was on day one outside of the fact that I don't hate him anymore. It consumes my thoughts. In the past few weeks the love switch turned off, and I no longer see him as my romantic partner. I shudder every time he touches me. I can't look at him without seeing them. If I don't hear from him, I am instantly triggered and lose my asset. I should note that I have been in personal therapy since I found out and, knowing the full history of our relationship, my therapist thinks it is not healthy for me to stay. That is inability to admit his reliance on alcohol and take any initiative post D-Day is a recipe for recurrence which, in all fairness, has been the cycle throughout our entire 12 years together. However, I still find myself liking him. We're still friends. We still enjoy each other's company. All of which makes me think there's a chance despite knowing better deep down. We both come from broken homes and I did not want this for our son. But I know from personal experience staying too long in an unhappy relationship isn't good for kiddos or us either. Feel like this is played out as much as it can. Like I've given as many chances as I can and it's time to cut and run. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1. The whole broken home comment kills me every time. You staying for the child isn't sustainable. Your child could care less about coming from a traditional household which you don't have regardless of any of this this because he's on the road constantly however, they will absolutely have an awful life if their mother and caretaker is miserable 24-7. Op answer, you la Chanel addict I agree. Never thought I'd be the person to use that excuse yet here I am. At some point you've got to look out for yourself, and your own sanity because you're right. Kids pick up on that. Redditor 2, more than possibly cheating, the drinking is a problem. Why are you throwing away your life on a man who loves booze more than you? 
The end result of excessive drinking is either death or dementia. Op answer, you username 19611691 had so many of my friends tell me I am the one thing that's keeping him alive. That he will be dead within 5 years if I leave him. I just have to keep reminding myself that's not my burden to bear. Redditor 3, did either now he was married and had a kid? Did you tell both of them about each other? Op answer, yes, supposedly according to him both knew he was married and had a kid. I didn't reach out to either, despite a strong desire to do so. Outside of the one Snapchat reply to chick one telling her not to contact my husband again. Redditor 4, um get a divorce, already. What in the hell are you waiting for? You think your son thinks you're happy? First mistake never believe a thing out of an addict's mouth.